In this video, we're going to explore this idea of microevolution, which you can kind of think of as a branch of evolution, and we'll talk about that more. We're also going to explore the Hardy-Weinberg principle of equilibrium, and this is a set of equations and principles that help us to measure uh, if evolution, specifically microevolution, is happening. So let's take a look at just evolution as a hallmark. We've defined it multiple times. Again, evolution is just a change in the genetic variation in a population over time. Now, when you and I think of the terms evolution, most people think of, you know, speciation. So the evolution of organisms into new species. And that's definitely one of the branches of evolution. But the branch that we're going to explore today is microevolution, and this is looking much smaller scale. This is looking at a single population and how the genetics are changing in that population. For example, if you have a set of moths that are mostly black-winged moths, but over a few generations they're becoming more white-winged, that's evolution. It's a change in their genetic variants. So evolution doesn't necessarily mean huge sweeping changes. It could just mean something small that is changing within a certain population. Later in this class, we will explore this concept of macroevolution, which is essentially the accumulation of lots of genetic variants, so much to the point where you start seeing diverging species. Now, we can say a population is changing, but the, the question is, is how much does it have to change for us to say, yeah, it's evolution that's happening. And so what we can do is almost measure evolution. We can measure that change in genetic variants. Now we can uh, quantify genetic variants by looking at the allele frequency. And let me give you an example. This isn't one you need to record, but just so you have an idea of what I mean by allele frequency. So in the country of Jordan, a study was done to determine the allele frequency of the different blood type alleles. So you might be familiar that we have A, B, O, and AB blood types, and those four different blood types are controlled by three different alleles, this IA, IB, and IO. And this study took a representative sample of the people in Jordan and determined if we look at all the alleles in the population, about 26% were IA, 13% IB, and 60% IO. Now, if this changes. If we start seeing 36 IA, if we start seeing 40% IO, that would be a change in allele frequency. And that change is what we call evolution. Now, later on in this series, we'll talk about how much change needs to happen for it to be evolution. But that's just kind of the basics of what we're looking for. So how do we do that, right? How, how do we measure enough change and say, oh yeah, evolution's happening, there's been a big enough change? And that is where this idea of Hardy-Weinberg principle of equilibrium comes in. Hardy and Weinberg uh, were two scientists. They're actually more mathematicians um, versus like hardcore scientists, uh, but nonetheless, their work incredibly important uh, in the field of evolution and in genetics. And essentially what this principle says is it says allele and genotype frequencies are inherently stable, as in they should stay the same one generation to the next generation. They should stay the same as long as there's no gene flow. So if you're not having a lot of immigration and emigration, then how your population looks this generation should look the same next generation. Hardy Weinberg says, okay, your alleles, your genes should stay stable as long as there's no natural selection. So as long as there's no selective pressure on that population, it should stay the same. It should stay the same as long as there's not a, a large influx of mutations. It should stay the same if we're talking about a relatively large population. If you have a small population, that means there's not that many individuals, meaning there's not that many genes, so it's more likely to get skewed um, through reproduction. And also, uh, these frequencies should be pretty stable as long as there's random mating. If every individual has an equal likelihood of mating with every other individual, then from one generation to the next, your alleles should be the same. So you can almost think of, and we're going to explore this term more in a little bit, you can almost think of the principle of equilibrium as a null hypothesis. 
A null hypothesis essentially means, hey, I think things are the same. Things won't change. And that's what the principle of equilibrium says. It says, hey, your alleles should stay the same just as long as these aren't being violated. If there's a whole lot of mutations, then yeah, you're probably going to have a change in allele frequencies. If there's a, a lot of non-random mating happening, yeah, your alleles are probably going to change. So principle of equilibrium is saying populations should stay the same with the exception of these five things. So again, this was just a quick uh, introduction to what microevolution is and the tool that we can use in order to measure that microevolution. The next couple of videos are going to explore more this Hardy-Weinberg uh, principle of equilibrium. There's some equations that go behind this principle that we can use in determining if a population is actually evolving.